Last week, we talked about why starting a business as opposed to going to college right out of high school is a really, really bad idea. This week, we're going to compare and contrast traditional two- and four-year institutions versus trade and technical colleges. This is Jordan Green Ellis. Welcome to All About the Money. Jordan Green Ellis. Jordan Green Ellis. Mr. Jordan Green Ellis. Mr. Green Ellis. Jordan Green Ellis. I know you may not feel like it, but your feelings are temporary. And sometimes they may not be telling you the truth about who you are. In fact, most times they aren't telling you the truth about who you are. You may feel like you come from the wrong side of the tracks or the wrong neighborhood, or maybe the unlikely is okay. When I was in college, I couldn't afford books, but now I write books for college students. All right, y'all, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do yourself and your financial future a favor and subscribe to this channel today. Don't wait. Today, we're going to compare and contrast traditional colleges versus technical and trade colleges. Now, I'm saying it specifically like this because I want to wrap your mind around the idea that trade and technical institutions are also colleges, okay? Colleges are an institution of higher learning, okay? No matter what you study, okay? There are some high schools that are called colleges or have college in their name, okay? Particularly where I'm from, there's a school called Baltimore City College, okay? The point is, it's the institution of higher learning. Now, the differences between traditional two and four year institutions and technical and trade colleges are simply what they offer as fields of study, okay? Traditionally, the, uh, the, the normal two and four year institutions are the ones that we most uh, recognize, most readily recognize, is that they're mostly based in the academic fields of study. But technical and trade colleges are usually more focused in an occupationally based field of study, um, like uh, HVAC or heating, ventilation, air conditioning, like uh, plumbing and steam fitting, like carpentry, like cosmetology, okay? So those are some examples of technical um, and trade uh, fields of study that you can get into out of high school. Now, to compare and contrast, I'm going to give you some information on how to come to your decision and all the things that you need to be looking for. Number one, there's a term that I want you to lock in your mind as it pertains to your financial future, return on investment, or ROI. ROI stands for return on investment. Understand this, anything that you desire to get out of life, you must make an investment whether it's financial investment, whether it's an intangible investment like your time, like your study, like your efforts, whatever it may be. If you are going to expect something out of life, if you're ever going to expect to get something out of life, out of a situation, out of a friendship, out of a job, whatever, you're going to have to invest something. You're going to have to put something in. And so I want you to lock this term in, ROI. This is the first thing that I want you to consider when you're making your post high school options. What is the type of return of investment that I'll get from this next step? What is the return or the potential of the return on investment that I'm gonna get from this next step? Or in other words, what can I get or what could I possibly get from me taking this particular direction after high school? What could I possibly get from getting a college degree? What could I possibly get from obtaining this trade certification or this degree at this particular trade or technical college, okay? What am I going to get, okay? That's the first thing. Then the second thing that I want you to ask yourself, what does it cost? What do I have to invest? What do I have to invest, okay? Now here's the thing, there's always going to be a financial investment, but if you put money in, you're always gonna get money out, okay? Sometimes it takes a little longer than what you would expect, but this is why we do the research on the front end to see the potential of the return so that we can expedite that time in the middle so that we can make that time in the middle faster so that we can get that return that we're expecting, okay? Now the next question is, what do I have to invest? Do I have to invest this amount of money? Do I have to invest this certain amount of time? Whatever it may be. Do I have to uh, get an apprenticeship or do I have to uh, uh, take some sort of capstone course to finish this degree? What is, what are rather I should say, the steps that is required of me to be able to get that return on the investment. This is all about the money, so we're gonna talk about money. Comparing the two, traditional colleges and universities, the ones that have mostly academically based offerings are usually more expensive, okay? Technical and trade colleges are usually more affordable. Now that doesn't mean that it may not necessarily be expensive for you or for your family, right? The technical and trade college option could very well be expensive but they are usually, in most cases, a lot more affordable than 
a traditional two or four year institution. Another aspect to consider as it pertains to what you're investing in addition to your money is your time. How long is it going to take me to complete this degree? Same thing can be with technical or trade colleges. How long is this program until completion? Is it 12 months? Is it 15 months? Is it 18 months? Is it 24 months? How long is it going to take for me to complete my end of the bargain so that I can get closer to that return on investment, rather I should say, excuse me. And so for the technical and trade colleges, because it is more industry specific, you're not going to have a wide range of academic study. It's going to be solely based on that particular field. And that's not a bad thing. Why? Because you're going to be ready as soon as you're done the program to jump right into the field and start making money. Do you hear me? This is why you need to start doing the research now. I need you to what's called count the costs, the literal costs and the intangible costs, like your time, how long it's going to take you to successfully complete the program so that you can fast track or fat, rather get closer to that opportunity where you can start making some money and recouping that money back. OK, so that's the first thing that I want you to consider as it pertains to ROI. What do I need to invest? How much is it going to cost me? as well as the time commitment. How long is it gonna take me? Is it gonna be a four year program? And do I have to do, and what do I have to do during that time? Do I have to do an apprenticeship? Do I have to get an internship? What are the time investments that I need to make, okay? So that's the first thing. How much it costs, what it's going to cost me physically, with money, and with my time. The next thing that I want you to consider as it pertains to making your decision is ask yourself, who is going to pay for this? Okay. Now don't get it twisted. I do highly encourage you to invest your own money if you have it, but you having your own money is not completely necessary. Why? Because there are funds readily available for students just like you. You may be thinking, I don't have a high GPA. That's okay. There are opportunities. You may be thinking to yourself, well, I wasn't the smartest in my class and that's okay because there are opportunities. They are called scholarships and grants, okay? There are also things such as private donors where people will be inclined to give to you for your next steps just because they want to invest in a future success story because that's who you are. There are opportunities out there and they are endless. I used to work at financial aid and there were many times where scholarship funds would go unused. Now my experience has been with the traditional colleges and universities. But I know from my professional experience as a consultant and working with families that do go to trade and technical colleges, that many of those technical and trade colleges also accept federal student aid, okay? So I'm saying that to say this, you don't always have to use all of your own money. Now we definitely wanna stay from, away from student loans, okay? But that doesn't mean you may not be able to qualify for federal uh, student grants. OK, as well as scholarships. There are scholarships that are specifically for technical and trade college students. OK, so ask yourself the second question. Who is going to pay for it? If it's you, awesome. Rock out. But if you feel like you don't have the money and you can't foot the bill on your own, that's OK. All you have to do is find the money and it's absolutely positively out there. The last thing that I want you to specifically do when you're making your decision as it pertains to what your next steps are, as you're narrowing down your career path or your major, right? I want you to do some research that is going to tell you the growth potential of the career that you're choosing. I want you to do some research that is going to give you information about the potential of growth, and I mean financial growth, and I mean opportunities growth, right? I want you to do some research that's going to give you some foresight, okay? Some foresight, what is being predicted about your particular selected industry, right? What is the industry of cosmetology is going to look like in the next five to 10 years? What is the construction industry going to look like in the next five to 10 years? What is the medical industry going to look like in the next five to 10 years? Educational industry, whatever it may be, do some research so that you can see the potential of its growth. While you're doing your research, I want you to look at the median incomes or the average incomes of your particular desired career, okay? I want you to start aiming at the very, very low end at around forty dollars to $50,000 as a median income starting out, okay? I want you to aim there starting out. That's fresh out of college. I want you to aim there. Let that be your litmus test. It can be a little higher. It can be a little lower depending on your uh, desired industry. And then I want you to make some decisions from there. You can get some of that information by doing some research online, 
but specifically you can go through the US Bureau of Labor Statistics and they have a growth chart they have predictions over the next few years about 10 years or so that's gonna tell you the trends of your desired career do this now okay I shared last week working with a family preparing for college and the mom told me how she originally wanted to be a social worker until she found out how much money she was going to be making and she called an audible she switched up the play and she became an accountant. I want you to be able to make an informed decision on your next steps, okay? Don't believe the hype, make a wise choice, okay? I know that you have a passion area that you're passionate about. You, you love visual arts, you're an artist, and I'm not telling you to sleep on your dreams. I am telling you, however, to consider the full spectrum. You can still do both at the same time, but your priority should be and your priority, in my opinion, needs to be on stabilizing yourself financially. There are some fields of study that are going to afford you more financial stability, as well as having the wisdom to live a certain type of lifestyle before you try to live a lavish type of lifestyle. Okay, so I don't want you to be spending more than you make. I don't want you to be cashing out like you got it. One day you will, but today we got to get there. Okay, we got to take these necessary steps. So don't believe the hype. Don't get, you know, so wound up over everybody's highlight reel on Instagram. Okay, one of the surefire ways to be able to know if somebody's telling the truth or not is how long they've been able to sustain what they say they've obtained. Okay, and so right now, all of this information is not only going to help you obtain a good opportunity that will afford you financial stability, which is predictable and consistent income, but it's also going to give you the right information to be able to sustain it or meaning for a long period of time, be able to have consistency in your lifestyle. All right. So I want you to do some research, take all this information, don't just learn it, but apply it. I heard Dr. Earl Suttle say this uh, not long ago, and I'm going to be saying it like I came up with it. Okay. He said, we're addicted to education but we're allergic to application. I don't want you to be allergic to application. Take this information and apply it. This is Jordan Green Ellis. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of All About The Money. I'm signing out, but I'll see you soon. My name is Jordan Green Ellis and I'm your debt-free degree coach, but who I am is not nearly as important as what I'm about to say. This is Kamaya Tynes, one of the students that I've recently worked with who is a college freshman and on her way to a degree without debt. She actually goes to one of the most expensive schools in her state. It's over $60,000 a year and she's getting paid to go to school. Why? Because she had the right information. The question isn't whether or not you can pay the bill. So I don't want you to worry, parents, because I know you're thinking about how that premium price is going to get paid, y'all. Your kid has got a dream school and they got a accepted into it, but you're wondering, man, what do I have to do to make sure that this bill is covered? Because I don't want my kid to ruin themselves financially. You and many others have this question, but you don't have the answer. The answer is in the information, y'all. You got to know how to get it done. Just like Kamaya and Antonio and Desiree and many other families that I've worked with just like yours, the how is in the information, y'all. So I want to encourage you to get the information. If you're wondering of how to foot the bill, if you're wondering if whether or not you're going to have to take drastic measures like my parents did who actually took money from their retirement to put their baby boy through college and it still wasn't enough I still had to borrow over $30,000 of student loans if you're wondering how to avoid all drastic situations then I want to encourage you to look no further and come get the answers to your questions at my upcoming boot camp y'all I'm gonna give you all the information that I give to my families one-on-one -on -one in one day I've come up with a formula I've come up with a curriculum to be able to give you so that you don't have to depend on anyone else one of the greatest pitfalls falls that I see in college preparation is that families think that they have time. Families think that the money's just going to pop up. Families think that the school they're getting ready to send their kid to is going to help them pay for it. And the truth is, y'all, they're not going to help you. I want to encourage you to get to my upcoming boot camp this month. It is the Degree With No Debt College Boot Camp. And I promise you, it'll be the best investment that you make this year. Why? Because you're going to get so much of a return on this investment. You're going to be like, I should have paid 20 times as much as I pay for it. There are two ways that you can join this boot camp. There's general admission, which is $50, and you'll be able to join this boot camp and get all the information that you need. And honestly, this would be good enough. But if you want to take it a step further, if you want to enhance your experience, I want to encourage you to join the VIP experience. The VIP experience comes with admission to the boot camp, as well as two of my books for free, as well as a scholarship list for free, as well as a private Q&A session for free. And the last bonus is absolutely crazy, but I'm going to do it anyway. Anyway, y'all, 
you'll get a month free in my private community called Caps and Gowns University. And it's just basically like the boot camp on steroids, y'all. It's so much more information. It's a community of people that are learning and growing just like you on their way to a debt-free degree. So I want to encourage you to sign up so that you can get the right information. Yes, it's going to be a lot, but you'll have access to the replay for a limited time. You'll be able to have what you need, y'all. And if you have any other questions, please reach out to my team at cgu at jordangreenellis.com. I am signing out, y'all. But I'll see you at the boot camp.